The true Christ will not return until immediately after the tribulation of Satan, as it's written in Matthew chapter 24, verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, speaking of Satan's tribulation, it was seven years, called Daniel's 70th week, and you'll find that final week of years written of in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, but as we know from this very chapter, Matthew 24, the Lord has shortened the days to a five-month period, as we know from Revelation chapter 9. And immediately after that five-month period, the true Christ shall return. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, the true Christ. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. It's at that time that they'll realize that they've been deceived into worshiping the devil. A lot of the Christians being set up for that now by believing in the pre-tribulation rapture theory. There's no such thing as the rapture, whether it be pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, post-tribulation, or whatever people want to argue about. It's not even a valid argument in the first place because the word rapture is not in the word of God we will gather back to Christ, but only at the seventh trumpet immediately after the tribulation of Satan. And that's the first resurrection written of in Revelation chapter 20. The first resurrection. The rest of the dead, the spiritually dead, that is to say, lived not again until the thousand years were finished, if they didn't take part in the first resurrection. And that thousand years is the tribulation of Almighty God that begins at the return of the true Christ. And then, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, realizing at that time that they've been deceived, because as we know from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, all are changed into spiritual bodies at that time, and they'll have total recall at that time, realizing exactly what has happened and that they've been deceived. And as it's written in Revelation chapter 6, They'll want the mountains and rocks to fall on them and cover them to hide them from the face of he that sitteth upon the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, the true Christ, who shall return at that time at the seventh trumpet, which is after the sixth trumpet. Satan appears as Antichrist at the sixth trumpet, and the true Christ doesn't return until the seventh trumpet. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And you can read of this in Revelation 19. He comes with the armies of heaven, those are those clouds written of in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, where it speaks of the gathering back to Christ in the clouds, in the air, in the spiritual bodies, that is to say, those who took part in the first resurrection, those who weren't deceived, those who weren't bamboozled by the rapture theory, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, that's the seventh trumpet, the last trump, the trump of God, and they shall gather together his elect, from the four winds, the four winds always speaking of that five-month-long hour of temptation, in this case at the end of it, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree, when its branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh, and summer is harvest time, which is the end of the world, as we know from Matthew chapter 13, the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. So there's your gathering back to Christ. And this parable of the fig tree has to do with the beginning of the final generation, which began in 1948. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors, with the parable of the fig tree being ultimately fulfilled with the gathering of the good figs to Jerusalem, the good figs being the election. What did it just say? He shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, at the seventh trumpet, and not until then, the first resurrection, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Those are the good figs returning to Jerusalem, as was prophesied in Jeremiah chapter 24. Verily I say unto you, this generation, the generation of the fig tree that began in 1948, shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day, speaking of the day of the Lord that begins at the seventh trumpet, and that's when the tribulation of Almighty God begins, the great tribulation, and hour, the hour of temptation, that five-month period just before the beginning of the Lord's day, knoweth no man, 
No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. The instant of the beginning of that five months, no man knows. But once it starts, you'll know we have five months to go, with Satan appearing in the middle of that hour of temptation. As we know from Daniel 9, 27, where it speaks of the midst of the week, now that it's been shortened, you're talking about the midst or the middle of of a five-month period. We also know from Revelation chapter 8, verse 1, that there is a half-hour silence in heaven, and this has to do with the fifth seal. Those souls under the altar are no longer asking God when he's going to avenge their blood, which was shed upon the earth. And that's how we know that that half-hour has to do with the last half of the hour of temptation, the last two and a half months, Because what does it say in the fifth seal in Revelation chapter 6, beginning with verse 9? And when he had opened the fifth seal, five is grace in biblical numerics, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season, and a season is about 91 days, about two and a half months, a little bit over, but close enough for you to understand, until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Now these souls under the altar were literally killed for the word of God, but the ones it's speaking of where it says, their brethren and their fellow servants that should be killed as they were is speaking of the elect being delivered up during the hour of temptation in the last half hour of it. So it's silent at that time because the souls under the altar are no longer asking how long it's going to be. They're watching the delivering up transpire. Those who refuse to worship Satan will be delivered up at that time, not being killed literally, but delivered up to death, which is a figure of speech that you can read of in Matthew 24 as well. If you go back to where Christ taught the fifth seal in Matthew chapter 24, beginning with verse 9 as well. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. Apoctino in the Greek, it's a figure of speech because death is one of Satan's names. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now how are you going to be hated of all nations if you're dead? It's a figure of speech because death is one of Satan's names. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now think about that. He that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. That documents for you that you're not killed literally at that time if you're one of those that are delivered up. You're simply delivered up to death, which is one of Satan's names, as we know from Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. It's a figure of speech, because Satan's going to be pretending to be Jesus at that time, and if he's butchering Christians, then that would totally blow his cover. So in Revelation chapter 20, when you read of the first resurrection upon the return of the true Christ, you see those that were beheaded... But that's not who this is speaking of here. Those that were beheaded for the word of God are those souls under the altar who are asking, how long until you avenge our blood that was shed upon the earth? And the answer is given, wait until your fellow servants are killed as you were. But in this case, it's a figure of speech, which means delivered up to death. And that's why it's silent in heaven for a half an hour after that, because we go from 555 to 666, after the deadly wound, and that's when the elect are delivered up. That's what it's talking about. So you have the seals covered in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. And in Luke 21, Christ says, Not a hair of your head shall perish, guaranteeing that it's not a physical death that it's speaking of there, just being delivered up to death, which is one of Satan's names, and Satan is the Antichrist. So to continue with Matthew 24 and verse 14, and this is the fifth seal, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So when the election are delivered up and God speaks through them, it will be transmitted throughout the world. Why? For a testimony against them. And this is clarified in Mark 13. Go to where the fifth seal is in Mark 13, and you'll see it in verse 9. Verse 9 once again. But take heed to yourselves... 
for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, browbeaten, insulted for staying true to the true Christ, because everybody's going to think that Satan is Jesus at that time. And ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. That's God speaking through the election. The seven thunders written of in Revelation chapter 10. That's what those seven thunders are. The voice of God through the elect being transmitted throughout the world. And many will come out of the confusion at that time. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour... And it happens during the hour of temptation that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Spirit. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, which is one of Satan's names, and the father the son, and the children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death, because they think that Satan's Jesus. They're going to turn you in thinking that they're saving you, but don't hate them for it. That's what they're supposed to do, just like how Judas betrayed Christ. Same sort of thing. It's predestined that that happens. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, for refusing to worship the false Christ, because you know who he is. You have that seal of God in your forehead. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And when is the end? At the seventh trumpet, as far as the flesh is concerned, that's the end of Satan's tribulation. But when is the end really? It's at the end of the thousand years, isn't it? It's at the end of the great tribulation, the tribulation of Almighty God, that the real end happens, the great white throne judgment. But when you shall see the abomination of desolation, now we're on to the sixth seal, and these aren't chronological because we already talked about what happens during the last half hour of the hour of temptation in the fifth seal, but now we're talking about the appearance of Satan as the false Christ. But when you shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where he ought not to properly translate this, let him that readeth understand. Then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains, and let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house, and let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. But woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, those that are impregnated with Satan's deception, that have that mark of the beast in their forehead or in their right hand, which means they'll be doing Satan's work for him, like turning in family members, thinking that they're converting them to Christianity when they're really delivering them to the devil. But again, they're supposed to for a testimony against the world. God will speak to the elect at that time. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, for in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of creation, which God created unto this time, neither shall be. Now what he's talking about here is the great tribulation at the woe of the seventh trumpet upon the return of the true Christ. Because what does he say? When you see the abomination of desolation, get out of Judea and let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. In other words, get out of Jerusalem, because upon the return of the true Christ, Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. Not one stone shall be left standing upon another, as it's written in Mark chapter 13 and Matthew 24. That's why. And when does that happen? Upon the return of the true Christ, immediately after Satan's tribulation, on the day that the true Christ returns and the great tribulation begins, the tribulation of Almighty God. There are two tribulations. Satan's tribulation lasts for five months, and then immediately after that begins the tribulation of Almighty God, the great tribulation. It lasts for a thousand years. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, because you need to get away from Jerusalem because it's going to be destroyed. It wouldn't hurt you in a spiritual body anyway, but he's making a point. For in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. And except that the Lord has shortened those days, now he's talking about Satan's tribulation again, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days from seven years to five months. And then, during Satan's tribulation, if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. 
For false Christs and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. Satan will be that convincing, in other words, in both half hours of the hour of temptation. You want to take into consideration what he'll be doing during that first half hour. Notice it's plural, false Christs and false prophets, the false prophet being his role of antichrist, something you need to look into. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the son of man coming in the clouds with the armies of heaven, the true Christ returning at the seventh trumpet with great power and glory. And then... Shall he send his angels, this is the gathering back to Christ, and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, and the four winds always means the five-month-long hour of temptation. Again, in this case, at the end of it, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. And again, the final generation, the generation of the fig tree, began in 1948, and it will end upon the return of the true Christ. So going back to Matthew chapter 24, now that we've seen that Mark 13 is almost identical, let's go to the sixth seal as it's given in Matthew chapter 24, beginning with verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, when ye therefore shall see Satan appear as the false Christ in Jerusalem at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet and the sixth vial, the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, when you see him, when he appears, he'll be here for the entire five-month period, but he won't appear until the middle. Stand in the holy place. When you see Satan stand in the holy place, when you see him stand in Jerusalem, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Get out of Jerusalem, because as Christ said in the beginning of Matthew 24, after his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple, and Jesus said unto them, it says in verse 2, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. It's going to be turned into sand. That's why he's saying, get out of there whenever you see Satan appear in Jerusalem. Neither let him which is in the field, and the field is the world, return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. You're supposed to remain a virgin bride. So if Christ returns and finds you with child, that means you are unfaithful. You've become a whore, the whore of Babylon. Most Christians will go from being that virgin bride of Christ to the whore of Babylon, the many-membered body of the Antichrist. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. And this better clarifies what I was saying, because you can only go a short distance on the Sabbath day. Again, he's making a point here. Christ became our Sabbath, but the point is, Jerusalem is going to be destroyed at the seventh trumpet. So when you see Satan appear there at the sixth trumpet, get out of there. For then, at the seventh trumpet, shall be great tribulation. The great tribulation is the tribulation of Almighty God, and it begins at the seventh trumpet, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, not the days of the great tribulation, but the tribulation of Satan, those days have been shortened from seven years to five months. There should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, during the five-month-long hour of temptation, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, plural, and shall show great signs and wonders. So during that first half hour, the first two and a half months, what you want to take into consideration is that Satan is most likely going to try and get you to think that the first half hour is the last half hour of the hour of temptation, so that when he appears as the false Christ, you'll think that he's Jesus. That's what he wants to get you to think. He wants to get you to worship him because you think that he's Christ, but he's Antichrist, which means instead of Christ. Insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive 
the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. Notice two different locations are given there. So again, it's highly likely that during that first half hour, Satan is going to have an anti-antichrist role to get you to think that the antichrist has been destroyed whenever Satan appears as the false Christ at the sixth trumpet. Notice it says, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. That's the 7,000. What about the other election? Will they waver? It's written in Daniel 11. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. It will be instantaneous, and all will change into spiritual bodies at that time, so you won't need anyone to tell you that Christ has returned, and that's the acid test. If you're still in a flesh body, Christ has not returned. For wheresoever the carcass is... There will the vultures be gathered together to properly translate this verse. It shouldn't say eagles, but vultures. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. In other words, the true Christ will not return until after the tribulation of Satan and the great tribulation, the tribulation of Almighty God, begins upon the return of the true Christ. And to further document that as a biblical fact, go to Daniel chapter 12. And if you're familiar with Daniel chapter 11, then you know that Daniel chapter 11 verse 21 begins the hour of temptation with Satan and his angels being cast from heaven unto the earth at the woe of the fifth trumpet, and then that one world political system emerges, and then two and a half months into it, somewhere thereabouts, after the woe of the fifth trumpet, the fifth vial is poured out on the seat of the beast, which is the deadly wound to the one world political system. And then Satan appears as the false Christ at the woe of the sixth trumpet, and that's covered in Daniel chapter 11, verses 31 through 45. That covers the last half hour of the hour of temptation, those last two and a half months. Then when you go to Daniel chapter 12, look what it says. And at that time, and this is immediately after the tribulation of Satan, Michael shall stand up, the great prince, the archangel, which standeth for the children of thy people. Now this is when Michael locks Satan up in the bottomless pit, as you can read of in Revelation 20. And if you continue to read Revelation 20, you'll see that that's when the first resurrection occurs. That's when the gathering back to Christ transpires at the seventh trumpet. And there shall be a time of trouble, this is the great tribulation, such as never was, since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found, written in the book, gathered by the angels, from the four winds of heaven, to the millennial temple. And if you have a companion Bible, as you can see, there's a note on this verse, a time of trouble, i.e. the great tribulation, that begins at the seventh trumpet upon the return of the true Christ. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some do everlasting life, that's the first resurrection, and some to shame and everlasting contempt, those who don't take part in the second resurrection, which transpires at the end of the thousand years. If they stand against Satan at that time, then they go into the eternity. If not, they're blotted out in the lake of fire. That's the everlasting contempt, because they'll never exist again, blotted out of existence forever and ever. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. The elect teaching discipline at that time, as you can read in Ezekiel chapters 40 through 48. Now let's go in closing to Revelation chapter 7. After the servants of God are sealed in their foreheads with the truth of God's word, the 144,000, the five-month-long hour of temptation begins at the woe of the fifth trumpet, and at the woe of the sixth trumpet, Satan appears as Antichrist, and the very elect are delivered up, in my opinion, and God speaks through them, activating the 144,000 who waver, as it's written in Daniel chapter 11, verse 35. And some of them of understanding shall fall, shall waver, to try them, and to purge, and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. So there you have it. Whenever the 144,000 
cease to waver and they understand what's happening because of what God will say through the election at that time, the 144,000 will be redeemed and they will teach during the millennium. So what happens after they teach during the millennium? After this, verse 9, another verse 9 here, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, way more than 7,000, and way more than 144,000, no man could number, this great multitude of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Notice they're standing before the throne. What happens after the great tribulation, the tribulation of Almighty God, also known as the millennium? What happens at the end of that thousand years? The great white throne judgment. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Father, Yahweh, the full God returning at the end of the millennium for the great white throne judgment you can read of in Revelation chapter 20. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts, the four living creatures, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, saying unto John, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. In other words, we're talking about the end of the thousand years. After the great white throne judgment, after all who offend are blotted out in the lake of fire, these came out of great tribulation. They stood against Satan and took part in the second resurrection. So this is the full number of those that are saved and are going into the eternity and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. The full Godhead returning after the thousand years are finished. And these next two verses document what I'm saying as far as the time frame goes as an absolute biblical fact. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. This can only be speaking of the eternity, the third world age.